Welcome to Brain Lady Speaks with Julie Anderson on the Lessons in Joyful Living Radio Network. Julie Brain Lady Anderson is considered to be one of the nation's top experts on the brain personality connection. She has been inspiring her audiences to fire up their brains and ignite positive changes in their relationships. And now she is here to bring that knowledge to you. The information she shares will help those who hear it to accelerate their success in life and business through the discovery of their natural gifts and maximizing their brain power. When you learn to tap into the potential of your natural gifts and the power of the brain-mind connection, there is no limit to what you can accomplish. Today and every Wednesday on Brain Lady Speaks, you'll explore the latest findings to see how they have practical application in your life. And now, get ready to join Julie Anderson on Brain Lady Speaks on the Lessons in Joyful Living Radio Network. Take it away, Julie. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome, everyone, to the Brain Lady Speaks radio show on the Lessons in Joyful Living Network. This is Julie Brain Lady Anderson. I am... Just so happy to have you here with me this morning. We are having a great time out here in Northern California. It's been an up and going morning already. We're getting a little toasty, getting a little toasty. It's getting a little warm out here. We might uh, actually hit, well, up here in the foothills where I live, we might only get into the um, 90s, but down in the Sacramento Valley, uh, it it is going to hit the three digits. As a matter of fact, I think it may have even hit three digits yesterday, so it's it's getting warm. We're pushing. We're almost to summer, right? Almost to summer. So we have some a really exciting show today. I'm very thankful that you are here with me. We are going to be talking a lot in the next few weeks today and in the next few weeks all about parenting and understanding the child's brain. So if you know of anyone who is a parent, who is expecting who is banging their head against the wall because they have a teenager? <laughs> then these next series of shows you're going to want to you're going to want to tie into. You're going to want to share the recording with them because when we understand the brain of our kids, it makes a really big difference. Really big difference in the way we interact with them and in the way we understand them. But before we get into the bulk of the show, what I want to do is uh, talk about the month. As you know, the beginning of every month, I talk about, I do a little bit of business coaching. And anyone out there who is in business or who owns a business or who works in marketing for a business, it's always good to tie in your marketing, tie in your social media posts, tie in, uh, you know, whatever you can to whatever's trending, whatever current topics there are, or whatever is happening on your calendar, annual calendar. And there's a few cool things, you know, when you're talking about the month of of June. I, of course, for me, being the brain lady, the month of June is uh, Alzheimer's and Brain Awareness Month. <laughs> right up right up my alley, right? So there's definitely some marketing that I will be doing throughout the month connected to that. Now, last week we had on um, how to have a, a eat for a healthy brain. We talked about stroke and stroke prevention. So I'm going to kind of continue in my business to um, monopolize on that, if you will, or or maximize my exposure by hitting that trending topic on Brain Awareness Month and giving some brain health. And with that in mind, I have decided that every month I'm going to give, uh, at the end of the show, I'm going to give a brain tip. So a tip for a healthy, happy brain. And also a business tip. So we're going to be doing biz tips um, at the end of every show as well. So you'll want to you'll want to listen to the entire program right up to the end in order to get that brain tip and that business tip that I'll be giving out at the end of the month. So back to the month of June and what's going on. We've got the brain Alzheimer's and Brain Awareness Month. It is also Caribbean American Heritage Month. It is LGBT Pride Month. It is National Safety Month. So there's a few m things that are, are connected to the month of June. And then actual dates within June. Guess what Sunday is? <laughs> this coming Sunday. I didn't even know this day existed. This is so funny. I love these calendars because some of these special days I don't even know exist. This coming Sunday, June uh, June 5th, is Donut Day. Woohoo! I don't know how you can put that in your marketing, but I'm sure you can find something creative. So Donut Day is on Sunday, June 5th. Um, D-Day is Monday, June 6th. The 14th, June 14th is Flag Day. 
I love this next one. The 18th, June 18th, is International Picnic Day. How can you wrap that into your, maybe you can create a business picnic basket. What about that? If you are an entrepreneur coach, create a business tip basket. Hey, maybe I'll do that. That sounds like a good idea. That just came to me. The 19th is Father's Day. The 20th, guess what, is the first day of summer. So those are some things, some definite days that are happening in, in or specific dates that you might be able to wrap into your marketing somehow, uh, into your social media posting, uh, keeping those things in mind. If those are trending topics, that's uh, kind of a hot, um, a hot top, uh, what's the word, a hot that's a word that's going around. The phrase that's going around is that trending topics. If you can get into the trending topics on your social media, you get more exposure um, and it kind of increases your search engine optimiz- optimization when it comes to people looking for those particular blogs or whatnot connected to those particular topics that might be on everyone's mind for the month of June. Another really big topic in June is that it's kind of end of school month, right? And that's one of the reasons why I jumped in and decided to end the month of June and we'll probably flow over into the month of July because there's so, so much information connected to the developing brain that um, and understanding how this neuroscience applies into your parenting, how you parent the little girls, how you parent the little boys, how you parent the toddler versus how you parent the the preteen versus how you parent the teen. I mean, there's a lot of insight that neuroscience can give us that helps us to gain a better view of what's going on in their head or what may not be going on in their head, right? I mean, sometimes that that is just what happens. So we're going to be covering this in the next couple of next few weeks right into probably into June or into July rather and then later on in the year in August we're going to do a show on homework and how to set up a a homework friendly classroom a homework brain friendly classroom to help support your kids in in school once school starts back up again in August so we're going to do a lot with kids over the next few months and we're going to work with we're redesigning the website right now I want you to make sure that you go and visit the BrainLadySpeaksRadioShow.com radio show page because if you're listening to these past shows on on any of the on iTunes, which you can find us on iTunes, Brain Lady Speaks uh, on iTunes, and I try to keep up as many of the links as I possibly can on the show page. But we're also creating a page on the website myself on the uh, Your Best Mind Online website that will have a lot of the past links. I'll try to run them for a lot longer amount of time in case you're catching this show on a replay or on a recording on iTunes. You'll be able to still have connect with some of the guests or find out more about the topics that we talked about. And it'll also, when you stay connected with me, connect with me on Twitter, uh, at Brain Lady, uh, Facebook, Purple Brain Lady is the fan page there. Um, it, email me if you have thoughts, ideas about the show, questions, you want more information, perhaps topics that you would like to see covered connected to the brain or connected to business or connected to entrepreneurism or, or whatever you're thinking. Uh, give me, Drop me a line. Send me an email at info, I-N-F-O, at yourbestmindonline.com or info at brainladyspeaker.com. And we will... We'll get it done. We'll get it included. We'll get it um, mixed in somehow if it's something that we can we can possibly pull off. All right. So that's kind of all the all the housekeeping there that I wanted to take care of at the beginning of the show. Again, remember to stay to the end to get those brain tips and the business tips. But for now, let's jump into the topic of the child's brain. You know, when we talk about the understanding the brain personality connection of people that we interact with, really there are very few relationships that puzzle us more (laughs) than that of our kids, right? I am the parent of three, the proud parent, I might say, of three grown boys. They are 28, 26, and 23. Uh, Very proud of all of my boys. Homeschooled all of my boys for 16 years from kindergarten through graduation. And then they went on to do their own things, some college and engineering stuff and all kinds of fun stuff. But I am the proud parent of these three boys. Now, I have to tell you, when I learned this information on the brain, it was such a big help. (laughs) 
it's such a big help because, you know, no matter who you are, there are just those times when you look into the eyes of your children and you wonder if there's even anything going on. They do something that to you seems so unreal. You, it, 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 I, I would find myself at times kind of dumbfounded staring at them like, what are you thinking? You know, why did you just do that? And sadly, sometimes this type of response or this type of not understanding what goes on in the brain, it causes us to a lot of frustration. And that frustration can lead to emotional interactions with your kids, emotional interactions that can lead to tears or arguments or possibly even heated displays of emotion. So when you are a parent, learning about what is going on in the brain of your children can be tremendously tremendously beneficial in increase improving our interaction with them especially when if you have uh, nowadays there are dual parents you know both parents are working or maybe you're a single parent so your time with your children is very limited between your work and their school and their homework you know you don't have a lot of quantity of time very often in this day and age. So you want all of that time that you do have to be quality time, quality time that is going to foster and build in your kids a strong, secure sense of self and understanding of self and ability to be social and interact with other people. And every extra tool that you can get or that you can employ is going to be helpful. And that's what we're going to do here. We're going to start at the very beginning. We're going to take a break here in a few seconds. But when we come back, we're going to start right there in utero. So what's going on in the brain? How? Because to me, what happens in those first few months of life um, during pregnancy is incredible. And it helps us to understand what goes on from birth onward. So when we come back, we're going to dig into that. We're going to talk about the amazing developing brain of your children. So get comfortable, get your drink, get your tea, get your coffee, and join me back at the Brain Lady Speaks radio show. With her thorough understanding of brain chemistry, Julie Anderson provides you with tools and processes that will change your life in a positive way. Julie uniquely blends science and psychology when she shares her knowledge and information with businesses, entrepreneurs, women's groups, and families to improve workplace morale and productivity, parents creating dynamic relationships with their children, and women achieving more in life and business. Julie Anderson will be right back with Brain Lady Speaks on the Lessons in Joyful Living Radio Network. Imagine what your life would be like if you could master the thoughts in your head that hold you back, the thoughts that prevent you from living the very very best version of the life you're here to live, the very best business that you're here to create. I'd like to invite you to join the Art of Personal Mastery, the free online event that starts the 11th of April. All you have to do to join is to go to www.theartofpersonalmastery.com, enter your name, your email, click Get Access, and I'll share with you how to join me and 21 leading experts from around the world talking about how to break your bad habits, create powerful new ones, master your mindset and your actions to create the life you're here to live. I'll see you there, www.theartofpersonalmastery.com. I'll see you soon. From quantum physics to metaphysics, cryptozoology to conspiracy theory, energy healing to angels, on Into the Light Paranormal Radio, we're here to tell you that just because you haven't experienced it doesn't mean it's not real. Each episode, Kitty Janice, Kimberly Rinaldi, and their guests have one goal, and that's to bring another conversation and another bit of consciousness into the light. Into the Light Paranormal Radio, Thursdays at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific, on the Lessons in Joyful Living Radio Network. Welcome back to Brain Lady Speaks on the Lessons in Joyful Living Radio Network. By including the latest scientific research on the brain personality connection, Julie Brain Lady Anderson provides her clients with the all-important why behind what people do and how they think. 
The information she shares will help those who hear to accelerate their success in life and business through the discovery of their natural gifts and maximizing their brain power. Here again is your host, Julie Anderson, with Brain Lady Speaks on the Lessons in Joyful Living Radio Network. Welcome back. Welcome back to the Brain Lady Speaks radio show. And our topic for today is the child's brain. And we're starting at the very beginning. Before I went to break, I said that when we came back, we were going to talk about really how amazing the growth of that brain is um, from gestation on to early childhood. It's just, it is just absolutely incredible. Now, we're going to be wrapping in in future shows. We're going to be talking about the brain personality connection of our individual children. So in the past, if you go back and listen to some of the other shows, we talked about um, communication styles. We talked about introversion, extroversion, ambiversion levels. We talked about gender and the brain and the difference between the male and the female brain. And then we talked about your brain quadrant dominance on one of the programs, really fascinating information. So all of this information connected to the brain personality connection is applies to our children as well. They just, not only do they have these, you know, amazing complicated personalities like all of us do, and these unique brain thumbprints or brain prints, as I like to call them, that is unique to them as an individual child, based on those factors, you know, their communication styles, their their male female brain, their brain quadrant dominance. But they also are dealing with that little extra challenge of the fact that the brain's just not all the way there yet. So we will discuss how to identify these different traits in a future show on um, the Brain Lady Speaks radio show in a future show about the child's brain and the introverted child and the extroverted child, the male child, the female child, all that kind of stuff. But right now we're just talking about the developing brain in general. So it's amazing to me, it's really amazing to me that at only three weeks gestation, so before most women even know that they are pregnant, the baby has already started to develop. The brain of the baby has already begun to develop and it's noticeable. You can see it begin to develop. And by the fifth week, even though the, the, the brain is no larger than the eraser of a pencil, so it's very, very, very tiny, the neurons have already began to grow and have already began to respond to external input because everything that goes on outside in the real world is affecting the brain, the developing brain of the child. And the more and more research that's done in this area, the more and the more they understand how what's going on outside is affecting this developing brain. So it's just it, by about six weeks is when that chemical bath happens that changes it. it it's interesting to me that the brain of the embryo is inherently a female brain, right? We talked about this on the gender show that we did a few, a couple of months back. And then when this, if there's a Y chromosome present at six weeks gestation, this brain gets a very critical chemical bath. And that chemical bath changes that inherently female brain into a male brain. And then that dictates or changes the physical characteristics. Now, depending on the strength of that chemical bath can depend on how strong those masculine or feminine characteristics will turn out to be in your child. So you can have a male child. You can have a, give birth to a little boy. And they may grow up being like quintessentially boy, right? Just everything they do is boy. From the grunts and the groans and the trucks and the dirt, you know, what is it? The puppy dog tails and snails or whatever that old that old uh, rhyme was. Or if that chemical bath was not as strong, they may come out with that Y chromosome. They may come out physically a boy, but they may have a more feminine outlook, a more feminine type brain because their chemical bath was not quite as strong. And the same goes uh, with the, if it's a female, if it's a female and the hormones are not, uh, the balance of the hormones are not just right during pregnancy or are at a higher or lower level, it's going to dictate how masculine or how feminine the baby winds up coming out to be. So it's very interesting. And all this starts to take place in about six weeks gestation. So still we're talking about a very, very small, small, um, little tiny thing, <laughs> right? And yet 
it is developing like crazy. By eight weeks from conception, the rudimentary structures of the brain and the central nervous systems are established, and the major components are clearly defined. So we're talking about two weeks pregnant. Um, By nine weeks gestation, it's growing at an astounding rate of 250,000 nerve cells per minute. Per minute. Okay, and by the end of pregnancy, most of the major fiber pathways in the brain are complete. Now, depending on how that, uh, the growth and how much input, how much external input that baby gets once it is born will determine how many of these pathways continue to grow or how many of them get pruned, get kind of cut out due to lack of use. And this is one of the reasons why... Um, there's, it's so important to give your infants such uh, highly, uh, a lot of stimulus, a lot of external stimulus. And understand that even before birth, uh, during this time of rapid development in the brain during pregnancy, it's extremely susceptible to outside influences. If the mother is exposed to different chemicals or uses drugs or alcohol, it can do serious damage to this growing brain. That's why you have things like fetal alcohol syndrome. Or you have infants that are actually born addicted to drugs because it has affected the brain at a developing stage. And the sad thing is, is that da- that damage that's done because it's done at such um, such a tender moment of development, it is oftentimes irreversible and can cause lifelong pro- problems to this individual um, when they become adults. So. Be, be aware of that. It's also, um, they're finding more and more now through research that the developing brain is susceptible to uh, activity that the mother, that, that happens in the atmosphere around the mom. So we're not talking about, you know, alcohol or drugs. We're talking about uh, if the mother is in a constant state of stress, perhaps due to, um, a poor relationship with a significant other, a violent relationship with a significant other, if there's a lot of hostility going on, uh, the the baby, the developing child in uterine can hear and process all of this, as well as the fact that, remember when we talked about stress in the brain on a sh- few shows ago, back in the, actually, I think it was back quite a while, it was back in the um, beginning of, in, Jan- in January, maybe in February, uh, the the effect that these stress hormones and stress chemicals have on the body if you are individually under a lot of stress and how to, that affects the brain. When a pregnant woman is under a great deal of stress, guess who else is getting affected by these hormones and neurochemist- neurochemicals that are being flushed throughout the body? So it's very important to remember that this brain is going through such massive development during these early stages or during the pregnancy that as much positive influence that you can give, it is just as important to give that positive influence to the developing brain in utero as it is once the child is born. So keeping a a calm, it's not just about eating healthy. It's about keeping yourself as a pregnant woman, uh, keeping yourself mentally healthy, keeping yourself emotionally healthy during this time is going to benefit your child greatly. It really honestly will. So it's not just about the physical. It's also about the emotional and what takes place and what stresses are on that baby during its development inside. And then we'll jump into, so that's kind of, that's the, that's the pregnancy part. Now, once the baby is born, it is amazing what happens in those first couple years of life. By the age of two, the brain of a child is just as active as an adult. As a matter of fact, in some ways, it's even more active because it is learning at such a huge rate. It makes a huge jump by the age of three. And at that point, at around three years of age, a child's brain is two and a half times more active than adults. Okay, did you get that? Our children at three years old, according to um, a Remus Shore, she published in 1997, Rethinking the Brain, New Insights into Early Development, 
It is, they believe, researchers believe that at three years old, the brain of a child is two and a half times more active than adults. So it is just buzzing off the hook because it is it is bringing in, it is learning so much at this stage of the game. And the more input you can give these little toddlers, the more uh, games that you can play that are going to stretch those neurons because within this these first three years there is just a massive explosion of neural connections in the brain in fact 80 percent of the synaptic connections that are made in the brain are made within these first three years 80 percent so here's where great parenting comes in i want you to understand this because this is a really important factor in these first three years, the more interaction between you and your child and your child and the environment, the greater formation of neural pathways. Okay. And this is important to understand. The brain, the child's, a child's brain grows these connections best through active play, literally getting on the floor with them and playing. The brain at this point is learning a ton of information through body movement, through discovery that it, that as this child walks through. This is why this is why toddlers, babies, and toddlers put things in their mouth. They're discovering. Their brain is is feeling the texture, the the size, the shape, the smell, everything about these different items. And it's through this body movement and through this interaction that the brain is huge. It takes huge, 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 huge strides in growth and development. We're going to have to run to break here in a minute. But when we come back, I want to talk about how dangerous it is, uh, just what this interaction needs to look like and how dangerous it is if the, the brain does not get this interaction and how limiting it during this time of life can actually stunt the brain. So once again, I want you to stand up for a minute, uh, stretch your fingers if you're taking notes. Take a big sip of water and hydrate and join me back after break on the Brain Lady Speaks radio show. With her thorough understanding of brain chemistry, Julie Anderson provides you with tools and processes that will change your life in a positive way. Julie uniquely blends science and psychology when she shares her knowledge and information with businesses, entrepreneurs, women's groups, and families to improve workplace morale and productivity, parents creating dynamic relationships with their children, and women achieving more in life and business. Julie Anderson will be right back with Brain Lady Speaks on the Lessons in Joyful Living Radio Network. Being in a bad marriage or relationship can make your life miserable. But staying in a bad marriage or relationship is not only miserable, but it should be unacceptable. Join relationship coach Lindsay Ellison each week for her new show, Start Over, Find Happiness, where she gives expert advice on all things divorce and breaking up. Dating after divorce, good sex, bad sex, the importance of self-love, setting boundaries, how to find love again, loving toxic partners, as well as Lindsay's own journey of divorce and rediscovery that has inspired millions of women around the world. You can also sign up for her coaching program, Thrive, which helps anyone navigate through the disparity of breaking up and starting a new journey. Join Lindsay Ellison every Monday, 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific on the Lessons in Joyful Living radio network. Go to lindsayellison.com for more information. It's the Fitness Minute with fitness expert, Annette Hammond. The Mediterranean diet incorporates the basics of healthy eating, similar to the traditional cooking style of countries bordering the Mediterranean Sea. The Mayo Clinic reports that an analysis of more than 1.5 million healthy adults showed that following the Mediterranean diet was associated with a reduced incidence of Alzheimer's and Parkinson's diseases and a reduced risk of death from heart disease and cancer. The Wall Street Journal cited a study published by the Journal of the American Medical Association that shows that the Mediterranean diet can counteract the effects of aging on the brain's ability to function. The diet emphasizes fruit and vegetables, unrefined grains and beans, and includes fish and minimal consumption of meat and full-fat dairy products. 
nuts, and olive oil play a big part also. Boost your brain by eating the Mediterranean way. I'm Annette Hammond. Welcome back to Brain Lady Speaks on the Lessons in Joyful Living Radio Network. By including the latest scientific research on the brain personality connection, Julie Brain Lady Anderson provides her clients with the all important why behind what people do and how they think. The information she shares will help those who hear to accelerate their success in life and business through the discovery of their natural gifts and maximizing their brain power. Here again is your host, Julie Anderson, with Brain Lady Speaks on the Lessons in Joyful Living Radio Network. Oh, welcome back. Welcome back. All right. So I hope I got your brains buzzing, (laughs) your brains buzzing. Before we went to break, I mentioned that talking about how very important uh, it is to interact and literally get on the floor and play with your kids and do that. Don't sit them in front of, you know, educational programs, as wonderful as educational programs may be. Uh, as wonderful as these interactive programs on your tablets may be, that is not what the brain needs to really maximize the growth and the connection of these uh, these neural, you know, all these neural pathways in the brain. Because if it is, I mentioned that if it is limited, if this interaction and body movement and is limited during these critical first five years, three to five years of a child's life, it can literally stunt their brain if they are not emotionally interacted with and physically interacted with. Uh, There are some statistics that are pretty interesting. In April of 1997, there was a conference on education that that took place at the White House. And it stated that, according to this one study, said that for every hour spent with technology versus real play, it increases the ADD, ADHD symptoms by 10%. So that's why at that same conference, it was encouraged that 90% of what children experience should be through active play and hands-on activity because this is going to help the brain thrive. It's also critically important that they get the emotional support And the physically emotional support, the hugs, the pats on the back, uh, the physical reassurance. Uh, In future shows, I've got an entire show planned out on touch and the importance of touch. It Research just comes out every single week on how important, how much the brain needs touch. And these are things that are critically important to the developing brain, even more so than to an adult, okay? Another a really um, extreme example of how limited interaction, emotional and physical interaction can stunt, can actually stunt not just the brain, but stunt physically, actually stunt physical growth is that of J.M. Barry. okay? He is Sir James Matthew Barry. He is the Scottish novelist who wrote none other than Peter Pan or The Boy Who Wouldn't Grow Up. That was the play that he wrote. Now, what's interesting is this was kind of loosely based on something that he experienced. So he was, there was a major um, uh, emotional thing that happened when he was very young. His mother had had lost, I think it was, let me see, Bury was the ninth child of 10, and two of the children had died before him. So there was a lot of emotional um, upset in his life. And by the time he was six years old, his next older, older brother, David, who was said to have been his mother's favorite, died two days before his 14th birthday. I guess it was some kind of an ice skating accident or something like that. This caused his mom, um, James's mom, to withdraw, to just kind of start to lose herself emotionally. And he, he did not get much emotional input or much caring. And he actually physically was stunted in his growth. He physically never grew very tall, never grew very big. He almost stopped growing at that point. Uh, 
So emotional upsets, extreme emotional stress and trauma can cause physical issues as well as, you know, as these these studies are showing, as well as mental and emotional issues, ADD, ADHD, all types of extra things that you want to be very cautious of. And there are a lot of other, tons of other examples. He's just one of the most famous examples out there that um, he, you know, that his physical growth was stunted. And that's one of the reasons why he kind of wrote this book on the boy who never grew up because he physically never really grew up. And it's important to understand that this all has to do with neuroscience. It all has to do with what's going on in the brain. Because if that brain is upset during critical points of development, it affects the brain and body for a lifetime. And it can prevent the child from thriving. So here is my first really big brain tip, really big parenting tip for you as parents. If you are the parent of a toddler Get on the floor. Get on the floor and play with them. Interact with them. Uh, When you get those child toys, the building blocks, the Legos, the Lincoln Logs, I don't know, I'm dating myself probably. They probably have all kinds of different things now. But, you know, literally get on the floor with them. When you're outside with them, the brain loves um, the multisensory input of the outdoors. When you take them outside, get dirty with them. Get, you know, get in the ground, build the dirt mounds with them. That It's that interaction that is not just going to improve your relationship with them. It is also going to just increase these neural connections. Because remember, the brain at this point is growing massively, two and a half times as active as the average adult. So these neural connections are just growing and connecting, and they're learning about space and time and what I, I don't mean outer space, I mean spatially, you know, their their environment and how everything interacts and how everything works. And I guarantee you the more active and more interactive you are with your children at this stage, the better it's going to be in the future. The better it's going to be when they are 10 and you don't know what's going on in this pre-adolescent child or when they are 15 and their hormones are all over the place and you just, you're not knowing how to connect with them. If you have connected with them when they were two and a half, three years old, it's going to be easier for you to connect with them when they are a teenager. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. So get on the floor, play with them, interact with them. Make sure that you that you push that time out of, or make that time within your schedule to have that, that interaction. Uh, with your children because it's so incredibly important. By the age of five, 85% of the child's brain development has already taken place. So that massive amount of neural connections is going to continue to increase until about 10 years old, but 85% of it is done by age of five. Then once they are 10, it's at that stage that the brain will still have about twice as many synapses as the brain of an adult. So all the way through this this time period, zero to 10 years old, they are growing in their brain activity. They are learning relationships. They are learning social skills. The more interaction that they can have during this period of time, the better it is. When I homeschooled my kids, I was always sure to make sure that they had interaction with other kids. They were never isolated. We were never an isolated homeschool. And if you are homeschooling, parent or you're thinking about homeschooling, this is very important because it's during this time so many of those social skills in the brain are developed and you want to foster that as much as possible. So understand that what takes place during those first five to ten years of life, especially the first five years of life, can have an enormous impact not only on how well the baby's brain develops at that moment, but on how well the baby will learn and grow throughout their lifetime. If they're fostered in the five to 10 year old stage, then they will probably continue to learn and their brain will continue to grow throughout their lifetime. Whereas if they're stunted, then they will also uh, be stunted in their brain growth as an adult. The nurture of, or the way that we are ra- that we raise our children is going to have a huge impact on critical brain development. So keep that in mind that those first, first 
you know, three by three years, two and a half times as active as an adult, and it's still more active than an adult at 10. Now, something very interesting begins to happen um, after age 10. The, the brain at different points and times in development goes through a process called pruning. And this is something to be really aware of. What pruning is, is it takes, the brain looks at connections in the brain, or these neural connections, and if there are ones that are not being used actively or not firing well, then the brain prunes them out. And many of the connections that were created earlier in life, the brain is going to deem no longer necessary and will be pruned away. Now, sometimes these may be... um, critical part, parts of the brain, but if you, if your child, if you weren't interacting with your child, your child didn't have a lot of input, and these parts are, are pruned away, it's very difficult for uh, that to ever, for emotionally and mentally to get past that. So these portions of the brain will, if it's, it's deemed unnecessary, it's going to be pruned away. By the way, side point, before we go to our last break, side point, that is why learning a language under the age of 10 is so important. It, have your kids learn extra languages. I, they, don't have to, they don't have to, you know, master them. But when they learn a second or a third language, the great thing is, is these neural connections that would naturally be pruned away at the age of 10 or around the age of 10 remain. They stick there. They stay there. Um, and that is... That's that's pretty crazy because then what that means is when you're 20 or you're 25, if you learn two or three languages prior to the age of 10, you can continue to learn languages with greater amount of ease throughout the rest of your life. Whereas if you wait and try to learn a second language in your 20s or your 30s, not so easy because this critical portion of the brain has been pruned away because it was deemed unimportant. So these are things that uh, the same with music. Teach your kids music. Have your kids in music lessons. We talked about the music in the brain. Um, We're going to head out to a break here. And when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about things to foster the growth of the brain during those first 10 or those first, yeah, those first 10 years of life. All right. So stretch, get comfortable and come back after the break. With her thorough understanding of brain chemistry, Julie Anderson provides you with tools and processes that will change your life in a positive way. Julie uniquely blends science and psychology when she shares her knowledge and information with businesses, entrepreneurs, women's groups, and families to improve workplace morale and productivity, parents creating dynamic relationships with their children, and women achieving more in life and business. Julie Anderson will be right back with Brain Lady Speaks on the Lessons in Joyful Living Radio Network. Imagine what your life would be like if you could master the thoughts in your head that hold you back, the thoughts that prevent you from living the very very best version of the life you're here to live, the very best business that you're here to create. I'd like to invite you to join the Art of Personal Mastery, the free online event that starts the 11th of April. All you have to do to join is to go to www.theartofpersonalmastery.com, enter your name, your email, click Get Access, and I'll share with you how to join me and 21 leaders experts from around the world talking about how to break your bad habits, create powerful new ones, master your mindset and your actions to create the life you're here to live. I'll see you there, www.theartofpersonalmastery.com. I'll see you soon. Believe it or not, there are times when even I can't think of the right word. The inability to think of a word is called lethologica. Texas Monthly Magazine recently came out with some colorful homespun sayings. Old as dirt and common as cornbread in the Lone Star State. Did you hear about the Texan that could strut sitting down? But he was all hat and no cattle, which means very boastful, but with nothing about which to boast. On top of that, he don't know a widget from a wangdoodle or a diddly squat. 
His wife was a mighty strong woman. She'd charge hell with a bucket of ice water. She was always telling folks that he was so tight, he could squeeze a nickel till the buffalo screamed. She also said he was famous for calling the hogs all night or snoring. It's marching Carolyn Davidson, and you can have fun challenging your words you never heard vocabulary with my new app, Too Funny for Words. Welcome back to Brain Lady Speaks on the Lessons in Joyful Living Radio Network. By including the latest scientific research on the brain personality connection, Julie Brain Lady Anderson provides her clients with the all important why behind what people do and how they think. The information she shares will help those who hear to accelerate their success in life and business through the discovery of their natural gifts and maximizing their brain power. Here again is your host, Julie Anderson, with Brain Lady Speaks on the Lessons in Joyful Living Radio Network. Welcome back. Welcome back to the last segment of June 1st, Wednesday, June 1st, Brain Lady Speaks Radio Show. We are talking all about the developing brain of our children and primarily what is taking place in the ages is birth, uh, conception through 10 years old. And I, before we shot off to break, I started talking about um, the music a little bit. Now, a couple weeks ago, we talked about music in the brain and just overall how music affects the brain. But there have been a lot of studies uh, I, on music and the developing brain and how important it is that we learn this. So learning language, I talked about language before the break. If you learn a language before the age of 10, a second language, I should say, then it gives your brain those critical portions of the brain that are connected to learning languages tend to remain intact, greater. They don't get pruned out as much as they would if you haven't learned a second language. Because once you learn your first language, your brain kind of goes, okay, now I can communicate and I don't need these extra learning language synapses anymore. I don't need these neural connections to learn languages because I already learned it. However, if you're constantly using it, it's what you're using that the brain doesn't prune out. So if you are using these neural connections and your children are using these neural connections by learning a second or a third language, then as an adult, those it's much easier to activate those neural centers again because the brain did not prune out as many of them. And the same goes with music. Uh, if you learn one instrument as a child, or you put your child in musical uh, in classes uh, in that first, you know, as young children, they, it's going to preserve these portions of the brain and strengthen these portions of the brain that would possibly get pruned out. Again, if you learn a, a, a musical instrument as a child, you're most likely going to have an easier time learning additional musical instruments as you grow up. However, it's not just that it doesn't prune out these places. It also encourages the brain to develop in other ways. There's a, what's called a neuropsychological distinction between certain sounds that are heard in music and that can actually aid in literacy and can help to improve academic results in kids. So back when we did all the, you know, when all in the United States, when all of the extracurricular programs were cut out of our adolescent or out of our school systems due to budget cuts, well, guess what? We were actually cutting out portions that were good for the brain. So it's important that if there's any ability for you to include musical training, it's going to be great for the kid's brain. A new study that was done at Northwestern University revealed that in order to reap the full cognitive benefits of a music class, kids can't just listen to the sounds. They have to actively be engaged in music or actively learning the music. So there was some studies done way back. I, I remember when I was pregnant with my kids. So this would have been, you know, 25, 30 years ago. There was this big movement to play classical music on a back then CD player, you know, and put the headphones on the stomach as the baby was in utero because this was hopefully thought to create more intelligent children. When really it's not that as much as it is activating these neural centers once the baby is born, activating it as a child and getting them this training and getting them involved because when they learn to read music, they're, they're activating different portions of their brain than just listening to music. When they learn to play music, they're activating motor sensors in their brain, the motor portions of their brain in ways that is going to improve on learning as well. It's just going to create 
a, a tighter mass of neural connections in the brain. It's very interesting uh, when, they, when they studied Albert Einstein's brain. So Albert Einstein, you know, long been considered one of the most intelligent people um, in history, right? When they studied his brain, his brain was actually slightly smaller than average in terms of weight, in terms of physical size. And yet his brain was heavily uh, heavily rippled, if you will, is probably a good way to put it. And that was that was indicative of the fact that he had a lot of these neural connections. And that's what learning something like music or language early on in before a child is 10 years old is going to help. It creates just so many more dense neural connections. And I always tell people the more neural connections you have, the better. Because when you start to lose them, when you get to my age or you get above 50 and you're when you're sixties or you get up into your seventies or whatever age it is and these neural connections just kind of start dying out with age, you want to have a lot of spare ones laying around in your brain. It's gonna make for a for a much more brain active uh, lifestyle after that. So this is this is pretty much what I wanted to cover today. We're not gonna really get into um, the teens yet. As you can see, there's so much information connected to the developing child's brain that we can't cover it all in one show. So what we're going to be talking about in next week, you'll want to tune in next week, what we're going to be talking about next week on next week's show is going to be a lot about what happens from that age 10 up. Because it's very important to understand that there are portions of the brain, even though it's growing and learning at alarming rates, in this period of time, it's still very, very far from developed. The last portions of the brain to develop are the areas that are devoted to critical thinking and reasoning. It's the area of the brain called the PFC or the prefrontal cortex. And it's not finished developing until you're around the age of 23. Now, this is the portion of the brain that's responsible for some of the most important functions in the thinking adult. It's kind of like the CEO of the brain. It regulates how the rest of the body and the other parts of the brain's function and interact with each other. It is responsible for reasoning, for judgment, for inhibiting emotions. Guess this. Guess, get this. For controlling impulses. How often have we had, uh, you know, your little kids just, you know, throw a fit at five years old and throw something at, at its best friend, Right. It's because the prefrontal cortex is not there. It's not there to control the impulses. Planning, rational thinking, problem solving, decision making, understanding consequences of their actions. We're going to talk a lot about this next week when we talk about the adolescents because this explains so much about the teens and the teens' brain. Understanding and interacting with other people, processing irony, okay? These are some of the things that this prefrontal cortex is responsible for and it helps us to understand what you know when you gain the understanding of the implications of what this portion of the brain does then it helps you to understand why kids do what they do sometimes because without these very critical functions up and running and flowing well they're not at full speed the elevator's not reaching the top floor right and they're not capable of processing information the same as an adult. So some of these things that we just think are automatically the easiest, oh, you know what? This is nothing. This is this seems so simple. Why on earth did they did that? Did they do that? It helps. You know, how many times have you seen a sibling, you know, one of your children sit and hit its brother or sister? And you're like, "Why did you just do that?" And maybe the child is just frustrated and they're almost like, "I don't know," or they took my toy and they just don't understand their brain, their prefrontal cortex isn't, in, isn't engaged to tell them, hey, this, is, this isn't okay. There are consequences to my actions. So the, the prefrontal cortex is, uh, is responsible for a lot of different things. I touched on them. We're going to be covering that in a lot more detail next week. And next week we're also going to be talking about that you know, that critical teen years, so many important things that happen in the teen years. Once you're not only messing with 
the neural connections in the brain and the developing brain, but you're also throwing those ever wonderful hormones into the batch. What a time in life, a beautiful time in life, but a stressful time in life as well. So that's what we're going to be covering next week. I hope that you got a really good um, impression today of that developing child brain up until the age of 10. Needless to say, there's a ton of information that I didn't cover, but it's hard because the brain is such a complex piece of machinery and everything that goes on to it is so complex that it's hard to just put it into small chunks of time. But I hope you got a good overview and it's going to help you to look at your children a little different and interact with your your toddlers and your you know three and four-year-olds much different. I want to, so that's that's going to conclude that topic. I want to real quick before we we um, break away here, I want to mention a couple of things that we have coming up. If you are in the greater Los Angeles area, I mentioned this on past shows on June sixteenth or June seventeenth and eighteenth. There is a two-day unlimited woman conference. I am one of the speakers there. I would love for you to reach out and connect with me. Come see me. I'm going to reserve the Sunday, which will be the 19th. I'm going to reserve that for one-to-ones, complimentary one-to-one sessions with pe- sessions with people who want to have those consultations. On the second of or the 25th, I should say, of June, I am going to be in Dublin, California. I am one of the keynote speakers at the um, Summer Star 2016 event there in Dublin. I will put a link up for that. If so if you're in the Bay Area, connect with me then. Um in on July the 22nd and 23rd, I am doing a rock your or uh, step into your power, rock the stage. Uh, st- event where we are going to be teaching how to utilize uh, utilize the the uh, stage to get your message out there. Okay, brain tip. I told you I was going to do a brain health tip real quick before we leave. Challenging mental activity will help to grow, grow dendrites and help keep those neurons stretched and narrow the synaptic gap. Buy a brain puzzle book. Get the brain puzzle book and uh, do brain games as often as you can, at least once every hour during the day of your workday, which also goes into your business brain tip of taking breaks often and doing those neural, those little games that are going to keep your brain healthy. Connect with me on social media. Follow me on Facebook, Purple Brain Lady, and join me next week as we talk about the teen brain on the Brain Lady Speaks radio show. Thank you and have an amazing week. for tuning in to this episode of Brain Lady Speaks with Julie Anderson. Julie Brain Lady Anderson is considered to be one of the nation's top experts on the brain personality connection.